So I've got this piece of oak. It's a Nelf cut from a previous project. Let's do something with it. But first things first. Cheers. Oh yeah. Now I've got my two pieces of wood prepared and ready. I need to get them all done for it. Let's get it done. So I have the mold ready, um, I used just some scrap I had laying around, that's the old worktop, um, I won't be using it anymore, and these are some pieces, I think I took it from a door frame or something, um, but they work perfectly fine for that one off, and that's just a piece of plastic, painters kind of uh, protective plastic, um, sheets, and I run silicone around the edges so it doesn't leak out, uh, I'm gonna leave it to cure a little bit. I'm going to cook my steak now and come back to it. I can spray some um, mold release spray, some silicone based release spray. Put the wooden pieces in there and mix up some resin. See what happens. Yeah, so this is it. Before we pour the resin, just need to vacuum it a little bit more because I can see a little bit of dust here. But other than that, I'm I'm good. Happy with the gap. Happy with what we've got. Well, let's try it. It's the very first time I'm doing it. Wish me luck. One thing I do need to make sure is I'm absolutely bang on level. And by the looks of it, I'm pretty good on all fronts. Now it's the fun part, so measure up the, uh, well, the mixing ratio of the resin to hardener. Uh, I'm going to go with the recommendations, which is in a label, uh, for every 100 ml of resin, I need to put 50 mill of hardener so I'm gonna put 200 200 mil resin to start with an additional 100 mil of hardener and I'm gonna pour the first batch see where we are how much it will take me and if needed I can mix up some more and I bought the one that is uh, recommended for wood obviously and it's the one that you can pour 
more than 20 millimeters on one on one time it's called it's called 50 for a reason because you can put up to 50 mil i'm not sponsored by these guys by any way so i'm um, you know it's just a regular thing i found online it's got very good reviews so i'm going to go ahead and mix it up Now I've got a first batch kind of mixed up, it's very thick I have to say, but I don't want it to be crystal clear so uh, luckily I've got some airbrush colors. Uh, these are solvent based so from my understanding they're going to work very well with that. I did test a quick batch on the side just to make sure there's no unwanted reaction in that and it seems to be good. Uh, what I've got here I've got sparkle pearl blue so it's like a pearlescent blue to it and um, I'm going to add a little bit of this into here and see what kind of effect we're going to get on it <coughs> and on the back of that I'm going to tint it with some uh, candy blue as well just to give it a little bit of extra color because that gives it quite of, I don't know if you can see it, you probably can on the camera but when the light shines to it I can kind of see it nice sparkling pearlescent blue through it but to make it a little bit more vibrant I'm gonna add some candy blue which for whatever reason tints things a little bit green but that's okay with me don't want to overdo it just a little bit of color around in here I wanted to have just a bit of a tint don't want to overpower it completely. As you can see it's turning a little bit green, even though I added blue, but that's okay. That's absolutely fine. Like that shade. Very nice. And with that metallic pearl in there, it definitely looks very interesting. Let's just mix it up a little bit more. Excellent. Let's see what we got. Excellent. Let's see what we got. So this is where we are. This is my well I added blue but it looks very green. But that's okay. I'm I'm rolling with that. It's a bit of a test, so let's see what happens. Here we go, it's a first layer, uh, covered about I would say half of it, but obviously it goes wide on the top so I need to mix up some more, so got second batch ready over here, just need to mix it up, again uh, sparkle pear blue which is a pearlescent blue and candy blue colour getting in there, let's see what we get. look inside if camera can pick this up that beautiful sparkle love it love that effect hopefully when it's dry or cured it will be visible but we'll see
perfect. It's bang on. I'm not sure, again, it's the first time I'm doing it. Not sure whether that will sink in a little bit, doesn't shrink when it's drawing. Uh, but it, it's a level. If I pour a little bit more, it will just, you know, start spilling on the wood and I'll give me more work later on. So let's leave it as it is. And I've seen this trick that guys that use a bit of a torch to the bit of the bubbles. And that works really, really well, actually, I have to say. Just to warm it up. Not too much. But look at that. Perfect. Beautiful. Let's leave it, see what happens. There you go, guys. It's drying. I love the semi, you know, transparency of it. It's, uh, you can still see the wood. It's got a color to it and it's got a beautiful sparkle. Um, I've seen some additives you can add to it, like powders that make it like completely um, opaque and just different shades of it, but this is the one I've done with my airbrush paints and I'm very happy with the result. I'm hoping it's going to dry really well and I'm hoping I can work it, but we'll see, you know. Um, I need to leave it for a few days now, probably more than that, depending on the temperature and the ambient temperature, but... Uh, I'll be coming back to it, just to check every now and again. But yeah, uh, I'll catch you guys in, uh, in a few days time, see what happens. We are now day 7 of this curing and it is now completely, completely solid. 24 hours later it was very much liquid. 48 hours later it was gooey, like a very uh, chewing gum on a very hot day. Three days later, it's becoming, you know, you could touch it without leaving marks, but fingernails absolutely was leaving marks in it. And, you know, as the time go on, you know, now it's day seven, and it's completely cured from this end anyway. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to break the mold, take it from it, because it's quite thick. It's about, it's nearly 50 mil, 45 mil, I think. So I'm guessing underneath is still maybe a bit softy, softy, but, you know, I don't know until I actually take it off, so... I'm going to break it apart, take the screws out, and see what's going on underneath. See, so that's very interesting because it took no effort to remove this. Um, didn't even break the plastic I had underneath. Uh, I did spray the whole thing with the uh, silicon spray, uh, which, according to the great uh, knowledge of Google, it's a mold release spray as well. But it clearly works very well because, as you can see, at the underneath that I would completely the resin sink in underneath the complete surface of it. It will need to be flattened down completely, obviously, but it didn't stick to that at all. You know, I'd expect it to be a little bit more messy than this, but it came off with no effort whatsoever, and I'm really happy with that. And this is what we got currently. So if you look underneath the light, kind of see through, which is what I wanted. Really good effect. Um, what do you think, guys? I like it. And most of all, um, what's most important, it's not gooey at all underneath. I was expecting not to be exposed to the, well, the air really, the oxygen. It's going to be a bit more softy, but it's not. In fact, I can feel that silicon spray um, over here is very slippery. I can feel it. Um, it's got a slightly different texture than this one here. Uh, but I'll. I'll it's ready to work, I think. I think I can start flattening it down. 
remove that silicone from here and I can start working it. Excellent, let's waste no time. At this point I needed a way to flat it down completely from both sides and work the edges to produce a very nice finish. Uh, so I needed, I needed a router, but I didn't have one at the time. Um, let me take you back to September last year when I was invited to a, a weekend show uh, run by the crazy horse from Barry St. Edmunds. I was invited as a pinstripe on site, so I had my stand and chatted to a lot of people for the weekend. A uh, little festival, it was very nice weather, very good bands playing, good atmosphere altogether. Uh, I spoke to a number of vendors on site and one of them was uh, Sealy, Sealy the tool manufacturer. I had a chat with them, they kind of knew who I was from the YouTube channel and we just had a chat, they said pick a tool from our catalogue you want we send it to you free of charge and you tell us what you think about it, make a video if you want and I was like, I was a bit skeptical at first because I'm thinking like is it selling out or something but end of the day you know me well enough guys if it was shit I will tell you it's shit um, but let's skip forward a little bit you know um, they sent me the router, I picked it from the catalog because I needed that, I didn't have it. They sent me a router, a bunch of accessories with it. A couple of weeks later they sent me the uh, bits as well for it. They sent it to me free of charge, I want to make it clear. Uh, and I started playing with it. I started playing with it for a number of jobs. And let me show you how I got on with flattening it down. So as you can see over here I've built kind of homemade router sleds, it was a one-off project you know but it's sturdy enough and it did the job really well I have to say. And that router and then blades and bits, they cut through that oak and resin like it was nothing, it really powered through. Uh, one battery wasn't fully charged so it kind of stopped working halfway through the job but the second one had the full charge on it and that completed the job without a hesitation. I know it's a small piece, uh, but it's a very hard wood. But that thing just melted that wood away, you know, chippings were flying everywhere. Like it was nothing, it was literally like cutting through butter. It was that good. So I'm very impressed with that. When I flattened it down from both ends uh, and wanted to produce that chamfered edge, uh, 45 degrees on it, so I used one of the attachments they sent me and again uh, that produced a beautiful finish, you know. I Yes, I probably could have done with the angle grinder and just by hand try to get to that level, but I will never get the same precision and the same amount of finish. It will always be a bit of a human imperfection hand over there because you just press it a little bit too hard and you got wavy finish and I wanted to avoid that so having the router it's really really making it taking it to the next level just a little bit better than doing it by hand.
here is teak oil, very simple oil for wood, for hardwoods. Uh, the reason I like it, it doesn't give you any additional coloring to the wood, it just enhances the natural beauty of the given wood and that's what I wanted to. I didn't want to color it with any way, I just wanted to preserve it the best way it is and I think the result, the outcome is it's really good, I like it. So overall, I'm very happy with performance of this little guy and, and I hear what you say, uh, of course they send it to you free of charge, you're not going to say anything bad about it, but that's not the case. Again guys, you know me well enough to know if it was shit, I will tell you it's shit, but it isn't. It isn't. It feels, it feels very good quality, heavy but not too heavy, uh, it's got good ergonomics and the components, all the accessories. They seem very well made, they seem very good quality. Uh, there's no real reason to complain about it, I'm really happy with it. If I really want to be anal about something, it's the controls over here. So you got the neon on button and then the, the speed. Uh, but there's no plus and minus on the separate buttons, you can only increase the speed by one segment, you got five speeds to choose for, but if you want to decrease it you need to kind of rotate it all the way up and then we'll just switch back to number one again and you can't really decrease and increase it on the fly you need to increase it and then go back to one and two three four five it's not really a big deal because once you find a speed you want you just press it and, and you leave it there but if you want to reduce the speed at the same time the extra button would probably be handy but then again it's the simplicity of using it you only got two buttons to operate uh, it's a personal choice I can live with that easy so this is the kit I, I got from them, from Silly. So you got the main unit, uh, the plunge base, two batteries, a charger, and there's a bunch of accessories and attachments here. Everything you need to make a full use of that uh, of that router. The entire kit fits in a in a little bag, uh, very handy bag to put the whole thing in there. And uh, the router bits that was separate. They also sent it to me. 
um, at later stage because they were out of stock. Uh, I only use a couple of these from them, but they seem really good quality. Again, I'm not a professional carpenter. Again, guys, I want to say this is a hobby for me. I'm not making a living, you know, uh, using using these tools. Uh, I cannot say whether they'll be working, you know, for a professional carpenter or not. But for my needs, they they perfect. They're more than enough, you know. I probably won't be using all of these bits and some of these accessories, uh, but it's good to have, you know. Um, very happy with that performance. So once again, guys, uh, big thanks to Sealy Tools uh, for sending me this guy for review, or not for review. They gave it to me so I can make a video on it. Uh, thank you very much. That's a great addition to my arsenal of tools. I always get new tools. I love tools. Uh, but let's get back to the business. Let's uh, have a chat about that little project. So, what do I think about that project I uh, attempted to do for the first time? There's a couple of lessons uh, I've learned, but a little bit later about it uh, at a later stage. Uh, what is it? Well, it was just a test to join in two pieces of wood with a resin and working it to a uh, high standard. I kind of achieved it, I think. What's it going to be? I wasn't sure at first. Maybe just a chopping board, maybe a shelf. I think I'm going to turn it into a little table. Uh, like a nightstand table or something like this, add some legs to it, but uh, maybe a video for a, for a different season. Um, now, the learnings and mistakes I make over here. So next time I'll be attempting this, and I think I will because I, I really like it. Um, what I'm going to do differently, well, first of all, I'm going to seal the edges of the wood when the resin is attaching to, before I pour the resin, uh, I'm going to paint it with that same resin uh, 24 or even 48 hours before I complete the job. The main reason for that is there was a number of spots here in the wood that oxygen was trapped and air was escaping pretty much all the time. It was like streak and bubbles of air coming from the, the raw pieces of wood and it was just polluting the, the surface and it was constantly causing like a like a like a mount of bubbles and I need to come back every few hours with a torch just to get rid of it so by sealing the edges before I pour the whole job hopefully I will eliminate this problem and that's the biggest learning curve I've got over here and number two is the temperature the temperature I started this project I think I've done it around December probably when I started it, or maybe it was January, I can't even remember. I was working on it in between the edge projects. It was just a side side thing. Uh, and I left it for 24 hours inside a garage, which was below 10 degrees at the time. And because of that, probably the resin got a little bit cold and not all of the bubbles escaped to the surface. I then took it and left it in my living room uh, to cure for the next week which was a good thing to do, uh, but still it was a little bit too late because it was already semi-cured and the bubbles got trapped inside. And as you can see, you can see them little bubbles, if camera can focus on it, inside there. It's not a really big deal, um, but it gives you that a little bit of milky consistency on it. Um, some people may like this effect, some people not, I, I don't know. Um, it's not so visible because I added this uh, pearlescent blue with the blue so it kind of looks like it's supposed to be there but uh, for the future I'll definitely need to make sure that project is poured in in summer if you don't have heated garage 24 7 or in a place that doesn't go below you know 15 or 16 degrees that's the bare minimum I think the resin needs to stay warm enough for all the bubbles to escape um, from that especially when pouring something thick like this that is 45 nearly 50, 50 mil Overall, I'm very happy with this project. Even though I made a couple of small mistakes on the way, I like to think I learned my lesson and for the next time I can avoid these. So for the first run, I'll take it. So once again, guys, thank you very much for watching. I'll, I'll leave a link to this router and the entire kit in the description of this video if you want to check it out. Thank you, silly. And hopefully I'll make one of these, but much bigger in the near future. Time will tell. Once again, guys, thank you very much for watching. Drink beer, work hard, and I'll see you next time.